Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Which one should I use for the demonstration here today? We've got a lot more authority on this guy. And I don't know. This one looks pretty cool. Hmm. But neither one of them have a propeller. Whoa. Did they lose it in a prop strike? Welcome to the so uh, Super Pilotish channel. My name is Graham Wilson. And today I'll be talking to you guys about how to prevent a prop strike in my basement. So first of all, I guess it's uh, I, I should do a, a little uh, announcement. Shout out to the veterans. You know, it's Veterans Day over in um, the United States and Remembrance Day here in Canada. And it's called Remembrance Day in uh, the other Commonwealth countries. So anyways, that's that's the day today. And hopefully everybody's kind of remembering them. Uh, you know, uh, the sacrifices that they've made. So, and a lot of that was done in aviation. The, uh, and I was thinking a bit more about like World War One, which is what the holiday is named after, right? Uh, it's uh, the, the aviation has come a long way since World War One, uh, and uh, aviation safety has too, and instructional techniques. Like back then, they would just throw somebody in a plane, tell them what to do, and say, "Okay, go for it." <laughs> you know, and they lost a lot of pilots and a lot of airplanes in uh, just in training uh, back in World War One. So, let's uh, try to make the world a little bit safer in aviation. And uh, okay, so like I was thinking about what to do uh, for a topic, as <laughs> as always, and uh, I was thinking, okay, prop strikes. Now, this is something where. We'll just have to use our imag our imagination on, on my excellent uh, training aids here. So, uh, yeah, this is my rudder. That's the back. I'm going to, I think I'll use this one here for the demonstrations. Um, and we'll assume that there's a propeller on the front. It's not a jet. So, okay. And uh, we'll assume it's a regular, uh, you know, tricycle gear, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh nose wheel main gear uh, kind of airplane. And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about, uh, okay, so in my experience as being an instructor, uh, there's been the, the amount of propeller strikes uh, that that I've encountered, uh, not that I've ever, I haven't actually had them, but I've known lots, uh, quite a few people that have had them by mistake. And I would say the number one reason for a propeller strike, it's usually, you know, you're, they're coming into land, something happens and it gets away from the pilot it's most of the time it's uh it's caused by uh action or inaction of the pilot and uh nobody ever wants to do it but you know people make mistakes so the number one reason that uh actually maybe i should display this somehow i don't have a whiteboard here but I do have the cardboard. I even got I even got the white cardboard today, so it's I'm, I'm transitioning to the whiteboard. So uh, let's see. The number one reason that I have seen uh, for a propeller strike is uh, we'll say we'll call this uh, prop strike reasons. Okay, prop meaning propeller. Prop strike reasons oh i have to squish it. might have to squish it in reasons number one is oops don't spell it wrong <laughs> crosswind now this is a strange one okay that's supposed to be an o in there crosswind um and yes wrench if the ground is too close to the propeller that's the number one reason oh and hi vanessa kitty welcome back again uh, yeah, so the crosswind, what happens when an airplane is coming into land with your, not a tail dragger, but just like a regular airplane. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I've had this happen to me where it could have uh, turned into a, a prop strike, but I, I managed to get control of it and everything was okay. Applied the proper technique and you're good. So here we are with coming into land and, uh, I'll get this out of the way. Good thing I got the KD-12X here for a training aid. So coming into land, we're going to pretend that there's a, uh, uh, any time that it was the prop strike, we've had a few of them where I uh, used to work, the wind is coming from this direction. So the pilot's uh, in a Cessna 172, we'll say. And so the pilot sits just like in your car on the left side of the airplane. 
So we got a crosswind coming this way. And the tendency for the uh, for the plane to come down, it goes like this, and it kind of flattens out a bit, and then you land with the nose slightly up, and you land on your main wheels. But if there's a, a crosswind coming from here, there's a tendency to make this, uh, especially if it's a gust. Um, so maybe uh, the wing stopped flying. You need a certain amount of airspeed to go over the wing, uh, air, a certain amount of air to go over the wing for it to fly. So maybe... Over here, okay, there's not enough air. Boom, so it comes down. But maybe there's a little gust from over here. Whoop, now this wing over here is flying. Maybe this one isn't because the, uh, the, the fuselage will block this one here. So this wing might not be flying. But this one here, all of a sudden, it starts flying again. So what happens is, <laughs> I'm not bending the wing. It uh, the, the, the plane will have a tendency to want to go up like that. And if you are a pilot sitting on this side of the airplane, you're going up in your seat. So if you're if you're a little bit panicky about things, your tendency is to think, oh, I'm climbing because I'm going up. My, I'm visually I'm looking out the window. I'm going up. That means I got to put my put my nose down to control it. But no, you don't in that case, uh, because if you're kind of going up, oh, I better put the nose down. Boom. And that's when you hit the propeller. So what you should do is uh, with any crosswind landing technique is you put your uh, if you were coming up like this, you would you would roll the airplane with your ailerons to bring it back down like that. But uh, the thing is that people panic and uh, maybe they're not used to that. Maybe they're out of practice um, and uh, uh, I'm going up. I have to go down. And then that's when the propeller strike happens. I've known that happen to multiple people. And like they're good pilots and everything like that. And in all cases, it was uh, they were uh, just pretty freshly licensed pilots. So they didn't have a whole lot of experience. And they just uh, and which is strange, like uh, usually pilots are extremely safe right after they get their license. They're probably the, you know, the, some of the safest pilots out there because they, they've had to train to a certain level to get their license and that's all fresh. But uh, what can happen is <laughs> something weird or maybe the, the students pushing their um, uh, comfort level just a little bit and something like that happens, boom. Okay, so prop strike, we don't want that. So remember it, the saying is, and uh, when you're learning how to fly, they always say, um, how, how would I put it exactly? It's the, uh, uh, the keep flying the plane until you shut the engine down. So, um, which seems weird. Like, what do you mean? I got to fly the plane when I'm on the ground. It's like, yeah, you do. Cause you could have like a little gust and that'll affect your directional control. Uh, you, you could, you could freak yourself out. <laughs> you get blown off the taxiway. And, uh, so that's why when you're learning how to fly, they teach you how to handle the controls in such a way that you, uh, like say if there's a big strong wind coming this way, that's going to want to pick your plane up. So, and if your if your plane was rolling like this, you would turn your uh, controls to level the wings. So you just do that on the ground, level your wings like that, and then you're already the wind's trying to pick you up. But you, haha, I already got the controls in place where you can't do that, Mister Wind. And so there we go. So those uh, those controls. Um, uh, the, yeah, the, the taxi inputs that you're supposed to be using, uh, always use them for the rest of your career. And, uh, it'll become, uh, more of a um, intuitive thing when you're landing and there's a crosswind, you're, you've already had that much more practice of turning into the wind when you're doing that. Okay. So that was number one. The number two reason that people have had prop strikes that I know of. It's a cute little animal, but uh, it's not fun when you're landing. If you porpoise, so they call them, uh, or you're porpoising or a pilot-induced oscillation. It's a pio. It's not a padre pio, but it's a pilot-induced oscillation. And uh, or porpoise is what they call it. So that's where you're landing and you might uh, be coming in a little bit too fast, probably a little too fast, a little too flat. And 
you, ideally you want to be stalling the airplane as the wheels are touching, but maybe you're too fast. So the, you're just trying to kind of fly it on like this and maybe you start bouncing and that's where they get the porpoise from. Right. So ee, ee, I don't even know what a porpoise sounds like. <laughs> so here I am, I'm coming into land bounce. Woo. And then you start doing that. And as you do it, it might start off a little bit, but it gets more and more till you come back down and uh, you, you hit your propeller off the ground. And it's a good way of collapsing the landing gear too. It's uh, so, uh, I, and I'm going to put a link. Um, I always showed my students this uh, one YouTube video. It's called, uh, I think it's called Crash at Bethlehem. Easy to remember because you think about like Jesus in the manger or whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I'll put a link to that in, in the description below after the show. And, uh, you'll see exactly what happens when the plane starts porpoising. And it's, uh, like <laughs> you show that to your student and you're like, okay, don't do that. That's what's going to happen if you don't do the right thing. And the right thing is what I'll tell you. Um, so if you found that you're coming in a little bit too flat and, uh, you're, you're starting that little bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. That's where it's best not to do anything, <laughs> you know, uh, strangely enough. You just basically, well, there's two things you can do, okay? A lot of times uh, they will only tell you, okay, you can just like give her the power, take off again, and uh, go around, try it again. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Or uh, the other way is if it's not too bad, you can just kind of hold your nose up and just hold the controls but don't move them at all. Just, okay, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to look out the window. I'm going to keep my nose out there on the trees, the nose of the airplane on the trees, and just wait. And then boom, you'll fall down. And the thing is, it, as long as you got your nose on, I always tell people, for little airplanes, this holds true, is that if you can just see the, the trees uh, at the end of the runway or the buildings or whatever is hangers are there, uh, if you got the nose on the horizon there, uh, you can fall pretty far and you're not going to damage anything. You won't hit your tail. And um, your landing gear can take a, a lot of punishment. <laughs> so it might be a little harder landing. Uh, and you can even goose the power a little bit to cushion it. But uh, that's a little bit more advanced. Um, and so that's the other one. So uh, if you're doing that porpoising, go around. Or you come back down and you're doing a little bounce. And just hold it and wait for it to come down again. But don't uh, the, the reason that it starts bouncing more and more is because the the air, the pilot is actually behind the airplane like, oh, the nose is going up. I better push it down. So by the time the nose is going down, it's bounced and you're like, oh, I better pull the nose up. And then so you're behind the airplane and the, the, the pilot actually makes that oscillation worse. So it's best just to, OK, hold it here. Wait, maybe a little power. Boom. And that's a nice way. So no porpoising or no pilot-induced oscillation. The third one, I've only heard of this uh, happening once, but I can see how it happen, um, how it could happen. And we'll say it's a mechanical issue. Mechanical issue. And by that, I mean you could have either uh maybe your your nose wheel uh or the tire for your nose wheel maybe you're uh maybe it's flat so you're now you're if you're uh you, you could be just like down just a little bit more because your nose uh wheel is flat and that might be enough just enough to just to hit the uh prop strike oh actually i got another one here i just remembered i'll get to that later okay mechanical issue so that would be flat tire or uh, the one case that I know what happened to somebody, they were flying a Lance Air. And so the Lance Air is a home-built airplane. And it's got, well, in, in pilot speak, they, they have the little shock absorber on the front. They call it an olio, which is uh, Italian for oil. But uh, olio is, um, uh, yeah, it's basically like a shock absorber. And sometimes the seal will break in there and the oil leaks out and then it collapses. So in that case, maybe the plane wasn't engineered to have a collapsed oleo in the front and the propeller might hit. So we could say oleo. 
Okay, what was that other one I just thought of for prop strike? Oh, another one. Okay, so here we go. So you have a mechanical issue with the flat tire or an oleo. The way to get around that, uh, <laughs> and yeah, wrench, I see it, it. And if you forget to put your wheels down on a retractable gear, you will hit the uh, propeller. But I was going to add that in here for a prop strike. Uh, remember to put your wheels down. But if you forget to put your wheels down, uh, you're going to have a bad day no matter what. <laughs> so that's a whole other category of uh, bad stuff that can happen. But yes, always put your wheels down when you land. It's it's easy to forget, actually. Uh, I, I've, I've seen it happen. <laughs> Not for myself, but I, like, I actually saw a guy go, like, oh my gosh, he doesn't have his wheels down. <laughs> so, whoops. Uh, that gets expensive. The guy was okay, though. Um, but he did have a little bit of a prop strike. You're true. Uh, true. The other way you can have it is, uh, and I've heard of this happening a couple of times, uh, not maintaining directional control and you hit the propeller off a snowbank. Uh, maybe the snowbank is, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, if you're getting that time where maybe it melts and then it freezes, now you got like a big chunk of ice there. Like, you, uh, instead of being able to um, shovel it. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, I've heard of it where, yep, the, there's a little patch of ice taxiing a little too fast. I mean, that can happen or the wind can make you, uh, the wind can push your tail around and all of a sudden tick, you know, all it takes is one little tick into a snowbank and you know, you're, you're the tip of your propeller is going pretty fast and there's a lot of leverage there and you can damage bearings and you can, um, uh, uh, yeah, you can damage bearings and you can break things in the engine. So yeah, anytime you, anytime the propeller does hit the ground, even if it doesn't look like there's any damage, uh, you, you gotta get the, uh, you gotta have the, 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 um, uh, engine, not exactly overhauled, but you gotta take it apart and make sure nothing's broken. So, um, okay. And what are we just got here? I'm just checking in the chat over here. See what's going on uh yeah so we got that okay so these are those are the four i guess main uh reasons you can have a prop strike oh you know what just for you wrench let's put in five put your gear down <laughs> actually that's happened more than probably any any of these here don't forget your landing gear uh actually that's not a reason so we'll say landing gear Yep, and you're right, wrench. That can be quite all right. There we go. There's the wrench special <laughs> right there. Don't forget your landing gear, and that can be quite embarrassing. And I know that uh, that happened to someone else I know, and he basically same thing there. He got so embarrassed he he never really flew that much ever again. Uh, but um, or or it could be he also was thinking he was getting a bit older, and he thought, mm, you know, maybe this uh, maybe I shouldn't be. Uh, flying and that, a lot of times older people will stop flying just because they, they have a scare or they have uh, uh, something happens where they say okay I would never do that and I've seen this happen to many uh, older pilots that maybe they get a little rusty and they just say nope that's it I mean if I can't fly uh, and it's good on them uh, most pilots will do it 99% will be they'll they'll quit themselves and they'll know their skills are not as good as when they were 25 or when, you know, they know they're not safe anymore and they'll stop. Uh, pilots are fantastic at that actually for saying, Nope, <laughs> I just don't have it anymore. Or they run out of money too. That'll do it. But okay. So there's our reasons for, uh, that you can get a prop strike. Okay. Now how can we avoid that? Okay, and I think I kind of, as I was going through it, I was kind of explaining as we go. So we'll just do it as a bit of a review. Okay, so for the crosswind here, uh, I fly in a crosswind that you uh, level that you're comfortable with. And um, yeah, and always keep flying the airplane until you shut it down. So, you know, uh, you're going to, yeah. And then so, yeah, the, we as soon as you get on the ground, ailerons into the wind and because like you're on the ground but you're almost flying so you really should do that okay and uh the porpoise or the pilot induced oscillation 
uh, that one there is make sure you have a good approach and you're not coming in too fast or too flat. And then, uh, then you would be, if you notice that the porpoise is starting to happen, okay, just hold some back pressure there and then um, uh, stop putting the inputs to actually do that. And, uh, or if it's looking ugly, give her the power and go around. Okay, mechanical issue. I guess uh, that would probably, the best you could do is uh, uh, on your uh, walk around or your pre-flight inspection, take a look to see if there's any, um, if, if the tire is unusually flat or if the oleo, a lot of people say there should be a couple fingers of um, shiny chrome that you can have there. Uh, make sure that it's not collapsed. And um, yeah, look for any oil that would be uh, leaking out of the oleo. Okay, <laughs> snowbank, uh, don't hit the snowbank. Now, the thing is, you would be, uh, you know, like they always say, stay right on that center line. You know, you can have a 150 foot wide taxiway, but stay on that yellow painted center line and your wingtips are going to be good and you're not going to, and that'll give you some, uh, that'll give you, it, it, the more you're on the center line, the better you're going to be, even if you lose it on some ice. And I, that's happened to, that happened to someone I know on their flight test. And uh, it was, wasn't me. I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> but the, uh, the, someone else's flight test, mine was another story. I might've told it, but um, yeah. So the, uh, yeah, they, they they were luckily right on the center line and they were just the wind took them on a patch of ice and they're going for a ride. And like, here comes <laughs> here comes the snowbank. And luckily, uh, they stopped before that. But uh, they they were right in the middle of the taxiway. So then, you know, uh, if they were a little bit closer to that snowbank and then they got blown, they might have hit it. You never know. And then, OK, don't forget your landing gear uh if you're you can do your gump check you can do whatever check you want to check uh in the airlines uh well the way i was taught it was uh was that you're flying if you're flying with someone else even if it's a passenger um you know you'll put your gear down wherever you think is appropriate and then on final approach you look at it and they'll usually have a uh, uh modern airplanes have three little lights to signify each uh landing gear or each wheel so you'd say three green um uh, confirm and then the other person says yep confirm three green and some some twin engine airplanes will even have a little parabolic mirror that they put on the nacelle and you can actually see if the nose gear is down so you could say three green one in the mirror confirm yep th three green one in the mirror confirm okay and uh there we go hopefully we won't be having any expensive prop strikes after this now and uh, we got a question here, okay, from Mona Moore. What would you do to encourage someone to fly again after an accident? Okay, yep, uh, I've uh, had to do that uh, as a chief flight instructor. And uh, yeah, I mean, accidents can happen to anybody. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I've bent metal in my day and you feel like a piece of crap after. But, uh, you know, you're human, you are going to make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes bend metal. <laughs> you know, hopefully it's nothing too bad. Uh, but um, you just kind of, I, I would say to anybody that, uh, that did have an accident. Um, now, what I would do, and after, this is after consulting with um, uh, instructors that were a lot more senior than me and even ex-military guys. Uh, that it's like if they have an accident, you got to get them up in the plane right away. So so they're not sitting there thinking. Uh, uh. But it's obvious after an accident that you need more training for something. Get with an instructor and get up in the plane right away and work on that problem that uh, that caused the accident. Um, yeah. So and uh, so what would I do to encourage someone to fly again after an accident? It's like you got to think about I did this. Um, I did a video a while ago, I forget the name of it, but it's about regression to the mean where you, most of your flying is, you know, you got a pretty good, uh, you're pretty good at it and pretty safe and everything. And every once in a while, there'll be something that's way off the charts that like, oh, and then that's what caused your accident. So it was just a one-time thing. One day, an unusual thing happened. You had, a, you know... <laughs> Something was on your mind that day that normally wasn't. Uh, something unusual happened. And oops, 
a little bit of an accident. So if you're alive, it's nothing money can't fix. <laughs> and that's why you got insurance. So, uh, yeah. And it's also, it's, it's a cost of doing business really. Um, so a lot of people think, Oh, you know, I'm going to bankrupt the company by uh, crashing planes. It's like, well, uh, a good company will factor that into their finances because it will happen. There's, <laughs> it's just gonna, it doesn't matter what airline you're with. Someone's going to, ding a wing tip off of a hanger or someone's going to do a prop strike. A student's going to go off the runway and take out a taxi light. It's going to happen. And you should be writing that into your cost of doing business and you better have your insurance up to date too. That's a legal requirement. Um, or have enough money in the bank to fix it. If you don't have the collision insurance, hull insurance. So there we go. Mona Moore. That's my answer to you. And what do we got here? Today is Friday. It's the weekend. So uh, what am I doing today? Going to be planting uh, garlic this weekend, hopefully. And um, yeah, it should be good. Soil's all ready. I got a whole bunch of leaves. Actually, it was funny the other day. I, I stole a bunch of leaves from a church. <laughs> so it was like I was driving by and I was like, whoa, those look good in my garden. So it was in this parking lot. I figured, well, maybe I'll, I, I was thinking, well, God put those uh, leaves there for me. So I went home and I got a tarp. I tarped, I took all these leaves out of the parking lot in the church and then <laughs> put them, they squished up really nicely into my station wagon. I got a whole bunch for the garden. So, and then uh, with those leaves and then I got some other leaves uh, to, I usually plant the garlic, put leaves on top. That gives a nice mulch for the worms and everything to eat for the next year. Keeps the weeds down. Awesome stuff. Oh, exciting. Gardening, flying, machining. Hey, all on the Super Pilotish channel that is here Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon. And we are going to shut it down with my mouse. Look at that. High tech around here. Sweet. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.